Hey everyone and welcome to another deep dive. Um this time we're tackling something yeah. that's gonna hit close to home. Absolutely. Literally. Yeah. We're unpacking the upcoming ballot measures right. for Albany, Oakland, Berkeley, and all of Alameda County. Wow. For the November 5th election. Big one. It is a big one. Yeah. These local measures often fly under the radar. They do. But they can have a bigger impact on your day-to-day -day life than you might think. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about things like how much you pay for that soda at the corner store. Right. The strategies in place to protect your home from wildfires. Huge. And even whether 16-year-olds should have a say in local elections. Interesting. Hey, before we continue, yeah, remember to subscribe to stay informed. Yes. We're going to break down these often confusing propositions yeah. and help you figure out what's what okay. to make things easier. Uh -huh. We've grouped the measures into themes. I like it. First up, okay. taxes and revenue. Always a hot topic, right? It is. And this year, we've got a mix of new taxes yeah. and changes to existing ones. Let's kick things off with Berkeley's Measure Z. Okay. The Berkeley Sugar Sweetened Beverage Tax Amendments. Mm. Interesting. This one builds on a tax that's been in place since 2014. Oh, so this is... Remember that extra cost you started seeing on your favorite sugary drinks? I do. Well, this measure clarifies some of the language huh. in the original tax and could potentially expand it okay. to include more types of drinks. So think about those bottled iced coffees or teas you grab on the go. Oh, yeah. Those could end up costing a bit more. Wow. The goal here is to reduce consumption of sugary beverages. Yeah. Which can lead to all sorts of health problems. Of course. And to generate revenue for city programs. So it's all about weighing those potential health benefits. Uh huh. Against the potential hit to your wallet. Exactly. It's a trade off voters will have to consider. For sure. Speaking of weighing costs and benefits, uh -huh. let's jump over to Oakland and talk about Measure MM. All right. The Oakland Wildfire Prevention Financing Act of 2024. This one hits close to home, especially with the increasing threat of wildfires in California. Yeah. Remember the devastating fires in recent years? Yeah. The smoke that filled the air? Sure. And the fear of evacuations? Scary stuff. This measure proposes a parcel tax to fund wildfire prevention efforts in Oakland. Now, for those unfamiliar with the term, yeah. a parcel tax is a fixed amount you pay based on the size of your property. Right. In this case, uh -huh. the money would go towards things like clearing brush okay creating defensible spaces around homes important and improving emergency response times think of it as an investment in peace of mind i like that knowing that your community is actively working to prevent and prepare for future wildfires yeah but of course it comes down to whether residents are willing to pay that extra cost right it's a tough decision Especially given the many financial pressures people are already facing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a delicate balance between safety and affordability. For sure. Now, while we're on the topic of taxes and what they fund. Okay. Let's head back to Berkeley and dive into Measure X. All right. The Berkeley Library Relief Act of 2024. This one's for all the bookworms out there. Yeah, yeah. The Berkeley Public Library System has been facing some funding challenges. I've heard that. And this measure proposes a parcel tax to help bridge the gap. Remember those long lines at the library? Oh, yeah. The limited hours? Uh-huh. And the struggle to find the resources you need? I do. This measure aims to address those issues. Right. By providing additional funding for staffing. Okay. Materials yeah. and programs. Think about those packed story times for kids. The Jorble The thing. free computer classes for seniors. Very cool. And the vast collection of books and resources available to everyone. This measure is about investing in a vital community resource that serves people of all ages and backgrounds. I love that. Yeah. It really highlights how local taxes can directly impact the services and programs yeah. that enrich our lives. For sure. And it raises the question. Yeah. How much are we willing to invest in our communities? That's a good question. It is. Yeah. A lot of people are asking that. Yeah. Especially where it comes to housing. Oh, yeah. Always a hot button issue in the Bay Area. Always. Yes, yeah. that it? And Berkeley in particular has a couple of measures on the ballot. Right. That aim to tackle different aspects of the housing crisis. Big issue. Huge. Yeah. First up, we've got Measure BB. Okay. The Berkeley City Council Rent Stabilization Ordinance Amendments and Housing Retention. This measure is all about strengthening tenant protections and promoting housing stability. So for renters, yeah. this is a big one. It is. Yeah. Remember those stories about skyrocketing rents? Uh-huh. No cause evictions. Right. And the constant fear of displacement. Scary. 
This measure aims to address those anxieties okay. by proposing various amendments to the city's existing rent stabilization ordinance. So for renters in Berkeley, this could mean stronger protections uh -huh. against unfair evictions, limitations on how much landlords can increase rent each year, right. and potentially even more affordable housing options. It's about creating a more stable and predictable housing market for tenants. Yeah. But of course, it's not without its critics. Right. Some argue that stricter rent control measures can discourage new development. Yeah. And potentially lead to a decrease in the overall availability of housing. It's a classic supply and demand argument. It is. If you make it less profitable for landlords to rent out their properties. Yeah. Will they take those units off the market or yeah. choose not to build new ones? Exactly. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. And that's why it's important for voters to carefully consider all sides of the issue before making a decision. Now let's take a look at another measure okay. that directly impacts renters. Right, measure Over. CC. Berkeley established direct rental payments and amendments to the Rent Stabilization Ordinance. This one proposes a pretty significant change to the way rent is handled. Oh. Imagine if instead of paying your rent directly to your landlord, okay. you paid it to the city. To the city. That's the basic idea. Wow. The city would then distribute the rent payments to landlords. Yeah. Proponents argue that this system could offer greater transparency and accountability. I can see that. Think about those situations where a landlord might be neglecting necessary repairs Stop. or failing to meet other obligations. Right. This system could potentially give tenants more leverage in those situations. Makes sense. It could also streamline the rent payment process okay. and create a more standardized system. So more efficient. However, some critics argue that this system could create additional bureaucracy. Oh, yeah? And potentially increase costs for both tenants and landlords. So another trade-off. Exactly. It's another example of those complex trade-offs that voters have to weigh. Okay, let's shift gears now and move on to our next theme. All right. Environmental issues. Okay. Berkeley has a couple of measures on the ballot that aim to address environmental concerns in different ways. Isadika. Let's start with Measure DD. All right. The Berkeley Prohibition on Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations. This one focuses on the environmental impact of large-scale animal agriculture. Have you ever driven past a massive industrial farm and been hit with that overwhelming smell. Oh, yeah. Or seen news reports about the pollution these operations can generate. Definitely. Those are often what are referred to as CAOFOs. Uh-huh. Or concentrated animal feeding operations. Right. And this measure proposes a ban on them within the city limits. So no more CAOFOs in Berkeley. Potentially. CAOFOs have been a subject of much debate. Yeah. Due to their potential impact on air and water quality. Of course. As well as animal welfare concerns. This measure is about taking a stand against those practices. Okay. And promoting more sustainable and ethical agricultural methods. It aligns with the growing movement towards plant-based diets. Yeah. And concerns about the environmental footprint of our food system. But of course, there are always counter-arguments. Right. Some might argue that such a ban could impact the availability and affordability of meat products. I can see that. Or that it infringes on the rights of farmers to operate their businesses as they see fit. It's a complex issue with ethical, economic, and environmental dimensions. Absolutely. Voters will have to weigh those competing perspectives and decide where they stand. Now let's turn our attention to a measure that tackles a different environmental concern. Okay. Measure GG. All right. Berkeley Ordinance to adopt a special tax on natural gas consumption. This one aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions okay. by putting a price on natural gas use. Think about all the ways you use natural gas in your daily life. Uh -huh. Eating your home, cooking your meals, even drying your clothes. Right. This tax would add a cost to those activities. Yeah. With the goal of encouraging people to transition to cleaner energy sources. It's a strategy that's being implemented in cities around the world. Yeah. As a way to combat climate change. The revenue generated from this tax would then be used to fund renewable energy projects and other environmental initiatives. So it's about incentivizing a shift towards a more sustainable future. Right. But of course it also raises concerns about affordability. Especially for low-income residents who might already be struggling to pay their energy bill. Right. It's another example of those tough choices we face as we try to balance environmental protection with economic realities. Speaking of tough choices. Yeah. Berkeley has another environmental measure on the ballot that takes aim at a more localized issue. Okay. Measure HH. Berkeley Ordinance 
requiring the adoption of minimum indoor air quality standards. This one focuses on improving the air we breathe inside our homes and workplaces. We often think about outdoor air pollution, but indoor air quality can be just as important. Especially for people with allergies or respiratory problems. Right. This measure proposes establishing minimum standards mm -hmm. for ventilation, filtration, and monitoring of indoor air quality, particularly in multi-unit residential buildings. So those older apartment buildings with poor ventilation yeah. or those units that might have mold or other allergens lurking in the shadows. This measure is about ensuring that everyone has access to clean and healthy indoor air. It's a public health issue. It is. But it also raises questions about costs and who bears the burden of implementing these standards. Right. Will building owners pass those costs on to tenants in the form of higher rents? It's another factor voters will have to consider. Absolutely. All right, let's shift gears one last time and move on to our final theme for today. Okay. City governance. This category covers a range of measures related to how our cities operate and manage their resources. It might sound a bit dry at first. It might. But trust me, these measures can have a significant impact on our communities. Let's start with Albany's measure. Oh. The Albany City Bond Limits. This one delves into the world of municipal finance. Think of it like a credit card limit for the city. Okay. Cities often issue bonds to borrow money for major projects like building new schools, wow. upgrading infrastructure, or creating parks. And just like with a credit card, there are limits on how much a city can borrow. Right. Measure U aims to adjust those limits. Proponents argue that the current limits are too restrictive. Okay. And that the city needs more flexibility to fund essential projects. But on the other hand, Opponents worry about increasing the city's debt burden yeah. and potentially impacting future generations. It's a debate about balancing the need for investments with the responsibility of fiscal prudence. Exactly. Now let's hop back over to Berkeley for a measure that's a bit more unique. Okay. We're talking about Measure V. All right. The Albany Youth Voting. This one proposes lowering the voting age for local elections in Albany to 16 years old. 16 year olds voting, that's a big change. It is a big one. Yeah. It's about expanding the electorate and giving younger residents a voice in local decision making. Right. Think about all the issues that directly impact young people. Uh huh. Education. Iguan. Climate change. For sure. Job opportunities. Yeah. This measure would allow them to have a say in those decisions. It's a fascinating idea. <laughs> and it's already been implemented in a few other cities around the country. It has. It has. Interesting. Proponents argue that it encourages civic engagement from a younger age. Makes <laughs> sense. And could lead to more informed and engaged citizens in the long run. So starting them young. Exactly. They also point out that 16-year-olds are already allowed to drive work and pay taxes. So why not give them the right to vote as well? It's a compelling argument. But of course, there are also concerns. Right. Some people worry that 16-year-olds might not be mature enough yeah. to make informed decisions about complex political issues. That's a good point. Others worry about potential influence from parents or peers. Oh, yeah, for sure. How do you ensure that young voters are making their own choices? Right. Based on their own understanding of the issues. That's a big one. It's a question that deserves careful consideration. Absolutely. Okay, before we wrap up, Let's head back to Albany okay. for one final measure in the city governance category. Right. It's Measure V. Albany Parks and Recreation Facilities Measure. This one proposes a bond measure to fund improvements. Oh, nice. To parks and recreation facilities throughout the city. I like this one. Think about those overcrowded soccer fields. Yeah. The aging playgrounds. Uh -huh. And the lack of community centers in some neighborhoods. Right. This bond measure aims to address those needs by providing funding for renovations, upgrades, and new construction. Sounds good. It's about investing in the spaces where people gather, yeah. play, and connect with their community. I like it. Parks and recreation facilities play a vital role in our quality of life, but those improvements come with a price tag. Of course they do. That's where the bond measure comes yeah. up. Okay. Essentially, the city would borrow money to fund these projects yeah. and then repay the debt over time with interest. So voters will have to decide. They will. Whether they're willing to take on that debt to improve their parks and recreation facilities. It's another example of those tough choices we face at the local level. Right. Do we prioritize investments in the present, even if it means taking on debt? Or do we focus on maintaining a balanced budget? Yeah. Even if it means delaying those improvements. These are the kinds of decisions that shape the future of our communities. 
Well said. And remember, you can find detailed information on all of these measures, yes. including arguments for and against at CaliforniaChoices.org. Great resource. It's a great resource for any voter who wants to dive deeper into the issues mm -hmm. and make informed decisions. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. But hopefully this deep dive has given you a better understanding yeah. of what's at stake in the upcoming election. Big election. It is. Remember, these local measures have a direct impact on your life, your community, and your future. So take some time to research the measures, consider the arguments on both sides, and most importantly... Get out there and vote. Your voice matters. It does. And with so many local issues on the ballot... How do we as residents ensure our voices are heard beyond just voting? Hmm, that's a good question. It is something to ponder as we head into this election season. Yeah. If you're enjoying these podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Don't forget. Thanks once again, and we'll see you soon.